It's about a man who has everything, uh, seemingly. He has money, family, wealth, education, modicum of talent, looks, you know, all of these social trappings, and he's not happy. He's a guy who, in a way, is a very empty inside. So he's poor in many respects in his eyes. And he wants to, or figures out, that in order to find out who he really is, needs to basically break free of all of society's trappings that have been put upon him. And he uses gambling as a way to escape. And to do that, he, needs, he, he knows he needs to risk his life, put his life on the line. And so we tell a story over a seven day period where he takes this journey into the underworld of LA um, with a view to basically just deconstructing himself. Yeah, I, it was really rich in the sense of situation and characters. And I love the notion of exploring the genre underworld of Los Angeles, but doing it in a, in a way that would allow me to subvert pre people's preconceptions of certain character archetypes and you know, the money lenders, or in the case of uh, Neville Baraka, played by Michael K. Williams, I wanted to get away from this idea that as a criminal, African-American criminal, he'd be this sort of West Coast gangster rapper and actually politicize him a bit more and um, give, him a, give him a sense of soul and, and uh, the idea, kind of like a Frank Lucas, that he was sort of giving something back to the community. And John Goodman, who plays Frank, this sort of Russian mobster money lender, um, play him as the devil and uh, sort of so he understands both sides of the argument in terms of what Jim Mark's character is looking to do and so it, it, it was exploring character first and foremost for me. Uh, a practical necessity that he lost the weight because um, Mark was pretty built from the film he'd done before with Transformers I mean he was coming off a film where he was you know very physical and he's playing a character here who's an academic, who's a teacher, who's, who's a guy who's not happy in his life, so he doesn't really care about how he looks or what he eats. And so it was really important that we didn't bring Mark's previous role into this movie, so he needed to shape shift. And he could have done that by overeating uh, or, or not eating at all, and we decided to go that way. Um, but it was a big, it was a big deal, because he had to lose 60 odd pounds in about three months just to and it, it was kind of wonderful because it allowed us to then drop Mark invisibly into this character. I, I, it's funny, I saw it as actually quite a straightforward thing because um, we knew, I knew that this guy is not your everyday teacher. Um, he's, a bit of a ro he's a bit of a rock star. He's, he's a guy that the students seek out at the campus to be at his lectures, hear him, be provoked by him, be entertained by him. So. All of these things, in a way, Mark has in spades as, a, as an actor and a performer. So um, that's how we played it. We played it against this notion of what is a teacher and the elbow patches and the tweed jacket. And, you know, he's not that kind of guy, which is what makes him an outsider. So um, that and then the idea that by night he's this guy inhabiting these, these very high stakes, quite dangerous pop-up gambling houses up in the hills or the underworld of Koreatown, all of that side of things. Um, you know, again, Mark has this outsider status and this, this quality about him. So it was, it was actually great to be able to use that. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> they're, it's, it's, I think when you're making an ensemble film and you have characters as fundamental as our characters are in, in this story, um, but they don't have a lot of screen time, you need really great, strong actors with imagination. Um, and not only ability, but also imagination to come in and, and just really expand upon what, what isn't always on the page, you know? And, and, it's, and, and by that, I mean, you know, what Bill had created on the page were very rich, specific sequences. But I think to actually flesh out who these people were and their own particular arcs, you need a great actor to make those guys protagonists of their own scenes. So uh, going in, I, I I, I was lucky I got my first choice on all of these parts, which doesn't always happen, so. Well, Jessica plays Roberta, who is Jim's mother. She's less of a battle axe, which is why I sought out Jessica. She's quite feminine, but she's, and she's not, you know, Jessica's not that much older than Mark in real world terms, so I like the idea that their relationship is built or, or in a way 
the dysfunction comes from the fact that they are just polar opposites. They may be mother and son, but they see the world in totally different ways. She believes in wealth and accumulation of it, and and in a way, she's a prisoner of her own of her own ambitions. And he's a guy who's like, I don't want anything to do with this, and I want to get away, far away from her um, and and what you and what she represents as as he possibly can. So. Um, so there's a, there's a fierceness to Jessica Lang, which I, I really liked, but there's also a femininity, which which was important. And then with Frank, with John, um, he plays the devil. He's a guy who uh, has a spirit, a charm, a wit, but is also incredibly dangerous. And um, and that combination of of both comic timing, but also pathos and drama, was key. And John Goodman has that. And and it's rare. I think, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a filmmaker, as many filmmakers sort of, I believe, first and foremost, you, we're here to entertain people. People go to the cinema to be entertained, to be enthralled, but at the same time, I don't think it's mutually exclusive in the sense that it is great to provoke and, and, um, and to sort of stir in people certain emotions and, and, and just, just get under the skin of things. And I think, um, I like going to films where real life consequences happen to the uh, to the to the protagonist. You know, there are repercussions to people's actions. I think in this day and age with a lot of temple movie making, characters are invincible and it sort of means less and less in real world terms. So hopefully people will go to this movie and come out of it, you know, in a way relating to the choices our characters make.